Hi, and welcome back to Hacker 101. In this session, we're going to talk about some techniques for tampering with cookies. To tamper with cookies on the browser side, I recommend using Firefox's development tools. Through the dev console, the cookie command provides a large number of features that are critical for this. You can easily list, delete, edit, and add cookies to the browser for a given domain. If you're just looking to switch a flag, as in level 2 of Hacker 101, for instance, this really makes it painless and foolproof. However, this does lock you to Firefox, and if the cookie from the server changes, so does the cookie you have stored locally. To get around this, you can manipulate responses from the server instead. For instance, if you intercept a response and add or edit a set cookie header, this lets you catch it before it even makes it to the browser. Using Burp's match and replace functionality, available in the options of the proxy tab, see the Burp 101 video, you can do this completely automatically. Simply set the type to response header and then enter an appropriate regex to match the cookie and its replacement. This is a technique I use on a huge number of projects, if only to remove HTTP only and secure from headers when I'm testing. This brings us to flags. There are two important flags when it comes to cookies in this context, secure and HTTP only. As a refresher, the secure flag prevents the cookies from being sent by the browser over plain text to HTTP, and the HTTP only flag prevents the cookies from being read from JavaScript. This is something you will often find to be lacking, especially in applications which have not been previously tested, and it's often in scope for bounty programs. Many times you'll notice that the data is not immediately readable. This can often obscure trivial bugs, so decoding this data is important. Base64 encoded data generally sticks out like a sore thumb, with it ending in an equal sign most of the time due to padding. Sometimes these symbols will be exchanged to get around other secondary encoding issues like URI encoding, but this is usually pretty easy to figure out and work around. Alternatively, if you see data all in the range of 0 to 9 and A to F, especially if it's all upper or all lower case, this will typically tip you off that it's hex encoded. Burp has a smart decoder feature, which will sometimes determine and handle the decoding of these blobs, but it's by no means foolproof. I personally tend to just drop them into a Python instance and manipulate them from there until I get something usable. Here are a few common manipulations you'll want to try with cookies. Change individual bits of data and see what changes. This is especially valuable when dealing with an encoded binary blob, like in the case of encrypted cookies. It's also useful to try swapping or duplicating key value pairs in cookies. These types of cookies aren't very common anymore, but you'll occasionally still see them, and these techniques can allow you to pass through validation unchecked in many cases. If you find a cookie with 32 to 40 nibbles of hex at the end, it's quite likely that it's a hash. If it's the output of an HMAC, then this should be safe. But if it's a bare hash, it's very likely you can execute a length extension attack to append data to the end of the cookie. The crypto lessons go into more detail on both HMACs and length extension attacks, if this is a bit over your head right now. At the end of the day, there are no hard and fast rules here. Try modifying the data in whatever ways seem interesting, and you'll almost certainly find something. For instance, what if you send non-hex data for a hex-encoded cookie? This might trigger an exception on the server and give you valuable data for further attacks. What happens if you edit the name of fields, or you duplicate them? These are the kinds of manipulations that will often pay off in big ways and are essentially never found by automated scanners. Cookies often look like untouchable, immutable blobs. Learning to treat them like any other part of the application to be tested will help you out in the long run. I hope this video has helped shed some light on the subject. As always, thanks for watching and happy breaking.